Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This last two months has been truly crazy. My YouTube channel has gone from 2,000 subscribers and now we're very close to reaching 10,000, which is truly mind-blowing to me. Thanks a lot for everyone who's subscribing. To celebrate this, I thought it would be interesting to make a little Q&A video so that I answer some of your questions about my project and also electronics engineering in general. So let's start with the first question. Xavier Roos asked, how did you get into electronics? How did you learn about what you do? And what are some projects you want to do in the future? So, my love for electronics and robotics started back when I was a kid. Back then we didn't have the internet, we didn't have YouTube, we didn't have Arduinos. And to make things worse, I live on a tiny island called Malta, which unfortunately didn't have any hardware stores for electronics. So the only way to get my electronics was from breaking my toys, so that was um, how I started. So these are some of my old projects. This is the first robot I have ever built. My grandpa helped me build this um, when I was around 10 years old. So it just has a brush DC motor, a light bulb, a battery holder and half a Siemens phone to make it look cool. <laughs> So then when I was 18 I entered university and I started playing around with PCB design. Um, so this is a frequency counter. This I think was the first PCB I have ever designed. Um, it's for the Squadraped robot. Regarding the future projects I definitely want to design some more PCB robots. Not just the one I did but different configurations. Next question. Tushar Gupta asked, what is the best way you can learn about electronics according to you? So the best lessons I ever got from electronics is when something fails or doesn't work for the first time. It actually never worked for the first time, but through that, through that debugging process, um, you will learn lessons um, that you cannot find in any book. So that is the best way. John Williams asked, what software do you prefer to use and is it affordable? Also, what sort of education do you have? So like I said, I am an electronics design engineer, but I don't actually work with designing PCBs. So I started as an electronics design engineer, but the company that I worked for was lacking software design engineers, so I had to do the shift. So basically I designed the software that goes onto some things that go into some cars. <laughs> Regarding to my preferred software, it's obviously Altium. I learned how to use it when I was a student, and I still use it at work. But the license is pretty expensive, so I can't afford it to use it here. So for my projects, I use Altium's free version of the Pro version, which is Circuit Maker. Avanj Paratap asks, when are you going to build that hummingbird using your techniques? So I've been thinking about this from day one. So ever since I got my flexible PCB actuator, the reason I haven't done it yet is because I want to finish the PCB robot first so that I can use the same circuits and the same software for the PCB fly. But I promise it's coming, but it's going to take about 6 more months. Francesco Segura asked, how do you design your coils? Like which software or which algorithm like the one that exists for KiCad? To design my PCB coils, I don't use any algorithms, so to do it, I first make a DXF file, then import it into Circuit Maker. I'm not a big fan of scripts or algorithms just because I usually want to utilize every space possible um, on my PCB area. So if we take the 6 layer PCB motor as an example, it uses all the area so there's not even space for one track left and it uses the area very efficiently and I don't think an algorithm can do that. But the downside of this custom approach is that it will take me more time to design them. Ray Olsen asks, have you tried sticking to PCBs for one motor? I get asked this question a lot, so for 2 layer PCBs I don't see it make much sense because it is more practical to just design a 4 layer PCB. This idea makes more sense for 6 layer PCBs, so this way you can stack it up to 12 layers and reduce the diameter of the motor, however it will increase the overall height and I'm not sure how I can use that in any of my projects. But I don't think this idea is very practical, I prefer to keep things simple and have everything connected on one PCB. Jeremy S. Cook asked me a question about my YouTube channel. He asked, uh, what do you think caused it to take off and what camera are you using? Do you like it? So this huge jump in subscribers um, happened when I posted the video about the PCB robot and the flex LED. And I think those projects went a little popular because I don't think a lot of people is using this kind of technology. Regarding the camera, I am using the Olympus OMD Mark III, which is a mirrorless digital camera. It's not the best camera in the world, but it does its job. But I'm also thinking of moving to a new camera soon. 
Avramitra asked, what do you think about auto-router? Should someone use it? Is it good practice? I don't suggest using auto-router um, just because I think you can do a better job um, routing the circuit. I've only done it once and just because um, the guy that was employing me, um, the one that to design a PCB within two hours. Um, so that's not humanly possible, so I had to do it. So back then I was just a student engineer, so you see what kind of douchebag this guy was. Um, so yeah, I didn't um, make it too far in this company. Tumbu asked, how did you get started in engineering and what advice do you give to a beginner? My career in engineering started with a very irresponsible start, a startup. So right after graduating engineering, I decided to start a startup with my friend. We are designing a drone. But long story short, the startup failed after a few months um, just because we were funding it out of our personal money so we needed to get a job But apart from the funding issue, this drone also had some problems with all the trust vectoring techniques that we were testing One also needs to consider that it had a lot of moving parts, a lot of wires and having way too many steps to assemble, which increased the price and made manufacturing a complete nightmare to think about. However, we learned out from this experience and based on the work I have did on this drone, I got the job I have today and also this YouTube channel. The advice I give to beginners is don't give up, um, you're probably going to fail, but you need to work hard and learn lessons from your failures. Luke McNeil sent me a bunch of questions, so let's go through them. What software and hardware tools do you use? So for software, like I mentioned, I use Circuit Maker and I use Fusion 360 for all the 3D modeling stuff. Regarding the tools, I don't actually have anything special, just a normal power supply, an oscilloscope, which I had ever since I was a student, um, multimeters, um, normal link soldering stuff that every maker has. Um, I recently got this um, microscope. Um, which is going to help me in my next projects. I also got a 3D printer and the company that's going to sponsor one of my next projects has recently sent me the spotter um, which is really fancy but more on that in that video He also asked about what tools or skills do I have that you got most productivity from I guess um, that's 3D printing Learning how to 3D design allowed me to take my project to the next level. So not just think about circuits, but also explore how they're going to fit mechanically. He also asked some questions about my YouTube channel, how I got started, um, how did I find my voice, how many takes did it took now and then, how you market yourself, funny failures. Um, so it still takes a lot of takes. Basically my primary language is not English. So it's Maltese, um, so only around 300,000 people know that language, so I can't make these videos in Maltese. Um, but there was definitely um, a kind of awkward stage. Um, I was not very comfortable showing my face on camera um, in the first few videos. So I was kind of doing some cool projects, but the videos were totally terrible. The audio was horrible, um, sorry for that. So like I said before this YouTube channel, I had a startup which totally failed. So it was a very rough time and since I didn't have much money left, I needed to make sure that my next project is going to be worth it. And that was when I came up with the PCB motor prototype. I actually had the first working prototype around 3 months before posting my first YouTube video about it. But once I posted it in the first two days, it got to around um, 10,000 views, mainly because like they shared it. But that's how it got started and as I got along I kept updating it and also posted about um, other projects as well. So I'm going to answer one last question, um, it's from Robot Girl. She asked what are your dreams for small swarm robots and do you have a vision to one day commercialize? What would your favorite application area of your robots be? So like I said in the PCB Robot video, the main application is Swarm Robotics. Um, basically, um, since the robot doesn't have any mo any physical motors in it, 
and it is obviously cheaper apart from the reduced price of the motor it also doesn't have any wires in it so if someday I'm going to commercialize it you also don't need a person to solder the wires of the motor which at high volumes is very expensive um, so that's the main idea behind it am I going to commercialize it? for now definitely not there is definitely more iterations that I need to do and after building it I think there are more ideas that can work much better than this for Swarm Robotics so Swarm Robotics is the main application area is it practical? I don't know yet but getting the prices down for robots and making them easier to get built is definitely something that I think is interesting and that's what I'm planning to do in the next few years on this YouTube channel so that's it for this Q&A thank you for everyone who have submitted questions I'm sorry if I didn't answer um, your specific question but I tried to go through them all the next video is going to be about my PCB motor so it should be out in the next week or two so don't miss it um, so that's it thank you for watching and thank you for helping me reach this milestone see you soon